I have the best news ever since the last time we talked to you. You don't live in Florida anymore. I don't live in Florida anymore. I drenched all that stank and Florida humidity off of me. I'm detoxed and I'm clean now. <laughs> you know what that feels like? It's like taking a shower after weeks of camping, but weeks was years. <laughs> I'm in a much better dude now, just because of that. I've only been out for a month, but I already feel like I see seasons, and there's less people on the street corners throwing things at traffic. It's great. <laughs> uh. Uh. How are you and the cat, and now the other new child that you're taking care of? Yeah, Loki, he's, he's, uh, we're okay. Don't complain about your new child like that. You just got him. He's not. He's a not a child. He's he's not. He's like in dog years. He's like he's like fifty. Okay, you be honest. You know fifty year olds that act like children. I, I know a seventy year old who acts like a child. He's the president <laughs> right now. <laughs> Congratulations. Ugh. Ah. Okay. So I love coming on here. I'm really thankful to be on here, too. I just hope I don't get another poop story, because I'm fed up with the poop. Nash? It, it seems, yeah, when you when you guess, it seems like, like the poop kind of happens a bunch, doesn't it? Sure does. And I get that you're used to it, but I'm not. <laughs> so. It's it's a sad thing when, when I've got like, yeah, I'm used to stories about people doing horrible shit with, with shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, that's that's just that that is an occupational hazard for me and not even just like gross accidents no actively doing horrible things with it too yeah. uh, yes i'm pleased no, i'm pleased this can make this experience makes you so angry <laughs> it's not anger it's fear and loathing and disgust uh. Well, okay, I, I'll let you okay. off the hook. You're, you're in love. There are no poop stories this week. Hey! Oh no! What do you have for me now? <laughs> so you're all thankful and shit, but we aren't even in there yet. If you miss poop, there is something wrong in my life. <laughs> it's like, uh, oh god, what's worse than poop? I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Because I know it's real. These stories are real. That's what bothers me the yeah. most. Let's get All the right. intro going. Okay. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, and bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And, you know, th th this is a, you're here for a first, because we've had these sort of stories before. Okay. And I don't know what it is, but it's, you know what? <laughs> I did, I would go so far as to call this a hero story in its own way, shall we say. And I think, <laughs> I think you will agree with me, especially considering where this story comes from. Um, right. Let me send it to you in the chat. Okay. I'm going to pull it up just a second. Da -da. I think you you will considering where the story comes from. You will agree this is the story of a just hero. the headline alone is enough to sell me on what. Oh my gosh, that's a hero, ladies and gentlemen. That's what a hero looks like. She drank the whole damn bottle. Opossum gets breaks into liquor store and gets drunk on bourbon. Fort Walton Beach, Florida. <sighs> Even the rodents are getting wasted. Uh, An opossum uh, drank bourbon after breaking into a Florida liquor store, sobered up at a wildlife rescue center, and was released on What do you mean sobered up at a wildlife rescue center? <laughs> an animal sobered up? What, did it go to Waffle House and then just chill for a couple hours? <laughs> <laughs> Emerald Coast Wildlife Refuge officials say the opossum was brought in by a Fort Walton Beach, Florida police officer. A liquor store employee found the uh, the animal next to a broken and empty bottle of bourbon. Worker there found the possum up on a shelf next to a cracked open bottle of liquor and with nothing in it. She definitely wasn't fully acting normal. 
Uh, the possum appeared disoriented, was successfully salivating, and pale. The staff pumped the marsupial full of fluids and cared for her as she sobered up. The opossum did not appear to have a hangover, so okay, it can How handle its liquor. Know? How would you know if it had a hangover or not? <laughs> Are there other opossums that you're basing that on? <laughs> yeah, oh. like, how much experience do you have with marsupials getting drunk in your store? I'm a rodent scientist. I'm going to get each animal out drunk on different types of alcohol. Bourbon, Jack Daniels, Jaeger. Let's see the effects over 24 hours. What do you mean my grant was declined? <laughs> I'm a scientist, sir. Okay, have you ever been a, actually been around a possum or a possum or any type of animal like that? I have a story about that, yes. Okay, before you get the story, they're not the most timid, um, polite, docile animals in the animal kingdom. So that on hard liquor? Oh my gosh, that's worse than Florida standards. <laughs> I, I, when I was in high school and I just gotten my Mustang, I was driving down uh, one of these... Um, roads that had the 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 closed estate places and i was driving past them middle of the night and a possum popped up in the road and i was able to hit the brakes i'm like okay little fella you go on and the possum attacked my tire like latched, it. Yeah. latched onto the tire of my car and started biting it and i'm like I didn't run you over. Please stop. And I, I had to get out and look at this possum just like. Ah, nah, 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 nah. It's like dogs with vacuum cleaners, but these little monsters are doing it to moving cars. Yeah, I was like, I, I'd be like, how could you're right. How could you tell if it was sober or not? It's a possum. Exactly. And how could you tell if it's hung over or holding its alcohol or not? They 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 pretty much do the, the John Belushi shit all the time normally. They do, and most of them are some of them are nocturnal anyway, so you're not gonna be able to tell their sleeping pattern. What the heck are you basing this on? Uh, we called in our chief veterinarian alcoholic specialist. He handles the um, you know, the AA for animals. This one's actually handling it a lot better. I'm I'm actually I'm just I'm I'm kind of impressed by this. You can't help but be a little bit impressed by the little I, am. I like not only breaking in, breaking a bottle open and drinking all the alcohol contents in it. Because uh, it says the alcohol was broken. The bottle was broken, right? Yep, yep. So it, either it like, like licked it out of an empty bottle, or it got super drunk, downed it with its little paw, and bashed it on the ground like four. Another! Uh, <laughs> uh, oh my gosh, can you imagine like the poor college student that had to clean up after that and found like a possum feces and like urine everywhere? Because you know that thing must have made a mess all over the place. Yeah. No way. No way. Well, it, it, how different is that from, like, you know, a frat party, really? Um, well, there's less drugs with the opossum and are you a, sure? lot, are you sure, a lot less plaid and hipster haircuts. So you're saying cleaning up after the possum is better? One opossum? Yes. <laughs> also, you don't have to deal with angry parents coming in the next day. How dare you sell this alcohol to my 19-year-olds? Little Johnny's going to be a doctor someday. You can tell I've had a lot of experience with frat party guys and their colleges, and oh my gosh. Also, yeah, of course it's Florida. Even the animals and wildlife want to get drunk to get through another night of disgusting, stank Florida and all the humidity. Uh. So, another thing you're probably familiar with after living down in the southeast is uh, Waffle House. Are you familiar with Waffle House? Oh yeah, not a fan, but I get it's a necessity for many people. For those of you, I, I understand my international viewers have no idea what the Waffle House is. Yes. Um, Waffle House, and by proxy, its distant cousin, the Huddle House. Um, it's it's a little. It's like someone took the concept of the greasy spoon and franchised it. Yes, it's it's not very good food. But there's a lot of it, and it's cheap, and they're open 24 hours, and they're yes. all over the interstate. Well, normally, well, they're supposed to be open 24 hours. So this guy, again, this guy's kind of my hero, too. I'm, I love this guy. I'm uh, sorry. Before, I haven't even looked at the story yet. There is a Waffle House that had to shut down? No. Not exactly. <laughs> All right. Waffle House customer cooks his own meal while staffers sleep. 
Columbia, South Carolina. After drink a night of drinking, a South Carolina man found himself alone in a restaurant cooking himself a meal as employees slept. Alex Bowen of West Columbia said he couldn't sleep, so he walked to a local Waffle House a block from his house. To his surprise, the staff was asleep. Bowen told ABC he waited at the register for 10 minutes for someone to take his order. He looked outside for police, didn't find anyone. The 36-year-old decided he was going to get on the hot grill and make himself a Texas bacon cheesesteak melt. He even cleaned up after he was done. Wow, even the actual employees don't do that. Look at the picture of the one guy. I don't know if you can see it on there. The yeah. first picture on his Facebook post is like this the actual, I guess, employee just asleep. And I love his pictures. He's just yeah, so well, happy. It's a story. It's a story, yeah. He's so happy to be cooking in the Waffle House. <laughs> He's just so, hey, ah, hey. <laughs> I, and he didn't pay at the time, but he came back the next day and paid for the food. He cooked himself. Oh, the heck no. <laughs> he paid for the food he cooked himself. <laughs> at the very bottom before we start talk I start talking about Waffle House a Waffle House district manager reached out to Bowen and asked him if he wanted to become a Waffle House secret shopper he even thanked him for pointing out a flaw in the business ABC News reported a He's flaw out of this. a flaw a flaw <laughs> Yeah, I guess it's more than just an oopsie when all your staff is asleep and the doors are unlocked for hours on end. The Maybe. whole Waffle House fell asleep. That's you're. Am I am amazed that fucking place still has money. The worst thing that happened was one honest guy had a good time in the kitchen and made his own meal and cleaned up after everything. You lucked out big time, Waffle House. Also, Waffle House, not to be rude, sometimes doesn't give the best clientele in the middle of the night. Yeah. Let's be honest, drug deals have happened at the Waffle House. Yeah, yeah. There's no denying it, okay? So if this is the worst as it gets, that's that's like a model story for Waffle House. Oh, yeah, not a bad month this guy time. Let's keep it going, guys. I was, I was like, okay, Bunky, you get a nap. I'll take care of the cheesesteak. It's okay. You, you'll get you to you. you. <laughs> Bless your heart. How does every how does everybody in the store go to sleep at once? Right. Yeah. I and I also don't get it's a kitchen. Even no matter how dead it is, there's stuff in kitchen that makes noises that you have to keep an eye on. The grill was still hot. Giant grill that's bigger than most people's beds. Uh, aren't you worried about that? Like, just maybe setting on fire? They are maybe? amazed they didn't burn up in the middle of the night. Oh, my God. Um, I, I don't know how many employees it were. It has to have been at least three. At least. Like, someone like being a manager, like a cook, maybe a server or something, but I doubt it. Like, maybe they alternated. So, say just three. We'll give them the bare minimum. All three people were so dead asleep that they didn't notice another guy firing up the sh everything else for the grill, taking selfies, laughing, and then walking around and having your picture taken. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> uh, what other restaurant could that happen in? Uh, Huddle House. <laughs> Dang it, Waffle House outdone us. Okay, there's four of us. If we all pretend to be asleep, maybe we'll get on the news, too. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Okay. That guy is so happy, though. That he is! Guy. He is! He's like, well, hey! I got my dinner! <laughs> oh, well, our next one comes from China, and the balls on this guy. I swear to God, I just, the fucking, the, 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 the brass stones on this jackass. <laughs> Man fined for painting road sign to uh, aid in his commute. Oh my gosh. That's a wily e. Coyote type stuff. Chinese man has been fined after he was captured on surveillance video painting new road signs in a bid to make his daily commute easier. Only fined? That's it? He's just been jailed. 
jail. Yeah, you could have caused some serious crap with that. Modern Express reports that a 28-year-old man surnamed Kai was fined 1,000 yen, which is 151 bucks. Oh, my gosh. In the no. eastern city of uh, Luang Yongang, uh, Jiangsu province, he was captured on camera on t- September 27th with a can of white paint, painting new arrows onto the road to redirect traffic, and told police it was a result of frustrations over the long delays on his daily bus journey to work. So He's let's, not even the one driving? Let's pause here. He's not even the one driving the car. He's riding the bus, so he's painting new roadsides for the bus to follow. And the bus driver's just such a, like, he never looks up. He's like, oh, error points, that's where I go. That's, this... That is horrifying. Like, it shows, like, the little video still, like, the screenshot. There's, like, a, a little Vespa or scooter or something. Yeah. He's literally on the asphalt, painting white air. <laughs> God. Is, is, is... How fed up is your, like, how bad is your commute where that's your only option? I, I... You know, I've been in some cities, like, I've been places, fucking Atlanta. I don't know yes. how anyone survives Atlanta. Spaghetti Junction, downtown is a nightmare. Just trying to, like, you miss your turn, you have to add another half hour to find out where you are. But I have never been stuck in Atlanta traffic and decided, you know what? I'm just gonna make my own off-ramp. <laughs> that's right. that's my solution. Okay, maybe if I point this arrow towards another direction, everyone else will go that way, and they won't be smart enough to figure out the actual direction. See, that's what I'm more afraid of. Like this guy's like trying to set up some devious plan, like pointing all the traffic into a dead end or something. Okay, I mean, he could have done that too. That would you know what? That would have been deadly, but also a little hilarious. <laughs> That many confused people trying to back out at the same time, which is more people behind them. Yeah. I guess. Also, this is not the first time that someone in China has used their arts and craft skills to invent their own traffic rules. <laughs> what? I. Oh, he. Oh. Dude was drawing his own. They draw their own parking space. <laughs> That's actually kind of genius. What do you mean, officer? I was in the lines. Look at him. <laughs> that is actually a little bit genius in its own way. There are places here in Charleston, downtown, I'd be like, yeah, that might work. Let's get the arts and crafts store before we go downtown. Keep an eye. Only 60 seconds I can spray paint my own white lines. I just, shit, you know? I can't. <laughs> also, but with your plan, with that parking plan, that's not going to end up in any fatalities. No, no, no. This guy, on the other hand, yeah. that could cause some serious crap. The balls on it. And I love how he's just hanging out in the road like ain't no fucking thing. He's literally squatted down on the, like, on, uh, on the ground with cars right next to him. He's like, how you doing, everybody? I, I work with the government on construction, don't worry. Uh, oh my god, what do you think the drivers thought, too? <laughs> They're like, what the heck? Also, okay, do you see the picture, like, the arrows that he's drawing? Just look at the ground that, aisle, like, the lane he's in. Yeah. Where are those arrows going? One's a U-turn, one's a left turn, and he's adding a third arrow. Yeah! So, what the heck are people supposed to think? Even that bus driver's going, so I just do whatever I want? All right. Yeah, it's just, just do whatever, you know? It's- just do donuts on, the, on this little circle? Okay, if that's what you want. Oh, okay, well, so... Yeah. This yeah, one, yeah. this next one is... Oh, Have you ever been in a hit and run? I've been the victim of a hit and run, yes. Yeah. Hey, you tried to ca- have you tried to catch the, the dude's plates as he drove off? I have. I um, was not successful. Uh, well, this lady was, and I'm pretty sure she wished she wasn't. Man drove down Maryland Highway with woman clinging to hood after crash. Washington, a 24-year-old woman said that a man tried to run her over after a minor car crash in Charles County, forcing her to jump onto the hood of his car and hold on as he drove down a Waldorf Highway. A highway. Andre Thomas Crew, 27, of Waldorf, now faced felony assault reckless endangerment charges. 
Maryland State Police and crew uh, said crew sideswiped the woman's car <laughs> shortly before 11 p.m. on uh, in, in Waldorf. When the woman got out of her car to take a picture of crew's vehicle tags, he accelerated to try to pin her between the two cars. Uh, okay, that's, yeah, that's awful. Please say this the woman... Yeah, this guy's doing time. Go ahead. Yeah. Please say the woman jumped onto the hood of the man's car to avoid being rammed and held on as he drove a quarter of a mile down the highway. The woman told police crews purposely tried to strike another vehicle to throw her off the hood, but she oh, was okay. a- but she was able to jump off before he struck the other vehicle. Well, a hit and run got me into this position, so if I do it twice, it'll cancel each other out. And here's the best part. Uh, police say crew and the woman did not know each other, and the attack was random. So just one day, two people, two completely different, non-intersecting lives, all of a sudden, for 15 minutes, this shit becomes an action movie for no good goddamn reason. This is already a better story than any Michael Bay action film I have ever seen. I know, right? Oh, oh my gosh, just... All the emotions that ain't from anger to pure fear from that woman, especially when she tried to get sideswiped and not get pinned between two cars. I guess the lady's a badass. Yeah. And hanging on for a quarter mile on the highway. And you know, you know, as she was hanging on the whole time, she was just like this on the fucking hood. Like flipping like the windshield, like like just like trying to rip them off. Yeah, you see that? I bet you can't do nothing about that. Oh yeah, I oh would fuck. I would. I would fuck up his I would, wipers. Oh, yeah. I would fuck up his antenna. I would fuck. I'd up- be there to bang that off. Yeah. Because at that point, if you're gonna die, you better make sure he knows what he's doing. Oh my gosh. This ass. I just okay, uh, asshole. You've already hit another car. She's gonna get your tags. You want to, but all of a sudden, you want to accelerate this to fucking murder over a hit? That's attempted. You tried to kill the lady. Intentional vehicular manslaughter? That's hard time. Hard time. No way around it. A hit and run, yeah, you might spend a little time in jail. You'll definitely pay a fine. You're going to have to repair the other car. On the other hand, murder... Which, as we've all learned from Guardians of the Galaxy, is one of the worst crimes there is. Yeah. They don't take that one lightly. It's like, this guy who played Grand Theft Auto, he's like, I got one star. I might as well go five. Because I'm going to see how far I can go with one night without losing the cops. How? I think, okay, and this guy has a license too, by the way, everyone. This guy has a license. And, and he hits somebody else's car. I'm like... <laughs> That was the solution. That was the solution. <laughs> That's what got you into this mess. Wouldn't it be ba- even worse if like another person like jumped onto the hood as well, like that driver? <laughs> <in the car? laughs> like on the lady. Did he hit you? Yeah, he hit me too. Oh, this piece of trash. Dude, Jesus Christ. Gosh. I mean, this guy's looking at a hard time now. There's no way around it. Second degree assault, reckless endangerment. First degree assault, traffic offenses, that's being polite, too. I mean, even if it just sticks with that, he's lucky. Yes! He's got an amazing lawyer, if that's if he's in that. But even still, why didn't he just stop after he hit the person? If no one was hurt in the first place? If no one was hurt, it was an honest accident. Yeah. And you know what? That- even if you don't run from a scene of an accident, if you hit somebody, you're not going to jail. Not unless you're drunk, but you're not going to jail if you hit somebody. You're just getting in trouble. You're going to pay a fine, your insurance. You you jump from having a shitty day to, to the murder. To, to attempted. What the fuck? <laughs> it's like, this is not the greatest analogy, like the underpants gnome. Step one, get away from the woman you just hit. Step two, step three, murder. Murder. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, where was this? Uh, this Baltimore, Washington? near Maryland, near Baltimore. Yeah. What's going on in this area? Oh, 27 year old. Way to go, Andre Crew. Way to go. You're going to be a celebrity in jail. Ugh. Oh, our next one is, you know, so I forget who said this. 
And this is no slam on British people. I love British people. I've met quite a few of them. We've had some on here. They're great. Folks. Hi, Dom. How you doing? Hi, Dom. No slam. But, you know, I've heard someone's often said that we assume British people are so much smarter than we are because of the accent. Correct. I mean, that's what that's what other people around the world assume, too. That's not just us. Yeah, that 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 is not a good assumption. That is definitely not a good assumption. British water utilities admit they use divining rods to find leaks. <laughs> 10 out of 12 water, 10 out of 12 water utilities in the United Kingdom admit their technicians use divining wads, rods to find underground leaks or water pipes, according to uh, investigation by science blogger Sally LePage. Dowsing is a century-old technique for locating water underground. Someone searching for water holds two parallel sticks, sometimes a single Y-shaped stick, called divining rods while walking in an area where there might be water under the surface. The branches supposedly twitch when they're near a water source. Needless to say, there's zero scientific evidence this technique actually works better than random chance. But LePage got a bunch of UK water companies to admit their technicians still employ the superstitious practice. LePage heard from her parents who live in Stratford-upon-Avon, that uh, a technician from their water company, uh, Severn Trent Water, has been using a divining rod to decide where to do work in the area. Curious, LePage tweeted at Severn's Twitter account to see if the utility really had technicians using the age all technique. Quote, we do have some techs that still have them in the van and use them if they need to. Uh, I, I have nothing to say. I don't even know how to process that. This this is not a third world country where they're desperate for water and rain and any means necessary. No. They're civilized and have the technology in the van. It's it, ten okay ten out of twelve water utilities in the United Kingdom. Ten out of twelve. One of the, yes. one of the more populated and condensed countries in the world. Yes. They all have government workers walking around with two sticks. Waving them, looking and hoping for water, and 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 also figuring out where to do work. Um, that's a good way to drill your ass into a power line. Is all <laughs> I'm saying. I I just it. <laughs> Needless to say, there's zero scientific evidence, but we're gonna hire him anyway. I mean, come on, Susan's great. Come on, we can't fire Susan. That's like doing the weather with a Ouija board. <laughs> Will it rain tomorrow? Okay. All right. For the five day forecast, we have our specialist eight ball. Eight ball. <laughs> I guess you'll have to tune in at nine o'clock to find the answer. It's, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's, it's a. It's a. It's not, it, it's not even like one of the podunk small way up north territory like colonies or territories where there's only like five nope. houses and that's it 10 out of 12 water utilities in the united kingdom so a vast majority have um you know how they have surveyors like in the states for like power and water and stuff yeah. like that like yeah. to go for ground okay their equivalent of that is magic sticks yeah i, I don't even know that sounds like i'm making it up it sounds I have nothing. This woman in the picture, it doesn't look like she's doing anything. It just looks like she's walking an imaginary dog or like reading an imaginary paper. It's, yeah, ma magic sticks. Magic. The water company is using magic sticks. Which... <laughs> your magic. Sorry, your magic stick TP is going to be an extra five dollars this month. We had to upgrade our equipment to two sticks. <laughs> five more pounds, folks. Do you want water or not? <laughs> five more pounds for the magic sticks. Oh. oh my gosh! Well, the Dom just moved out of UK. He now lives in the States. Yeah, kind of can't argue it after this. If you're paying for um, the the staff and the co government company that makes sure your water is there, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, I, I have nothing. I mean, this one's kind of exhausted my brain. I don't even know how to add anything to that. Well, it's. 
<laughs> if you thought that one exhausted your brain, we started in Florida. We're ending in Florida. Am I, Nash? Am I going to have nightmares? Oh, this one's just going to make you angry. Because not only is Great. it not only is it malicious, it's stupid malicious, which is all uh, the more frustrating. More stupid and malicious than that drunk that hit and run driver. Yep. Okay, I'm clicking on it now. Florida man sets girlfriend's house on fire, blames it on random black guy. Knock his teeth out. Florida don't, man. Don't care. I don't care what happens to this guy. Don't care. Florida man is accused of setting his girlfriend's house on fire, told detectives, quote, a random black guy was to blame. And this he, it, used, he used the Eric Cartman defense. Oh, and don't worry, it's there's even more to it than this. It's so much stupid going on here. I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. Please tell the story. According to the affidavit, Jose Bernande, Bernando Rosas Madrigal, 19, of Auburndale, was arrested Saturday after he set fire to his girlfriend's home. While she and her family members were inside, everybody's fine. He didn't even yeah. do all that much damage, too, which is good. The <laughs> investigators say the front of the home, specifically his girlfriend's bedroom, was covered in flammable fluid. Madrigal also sprayed fluid all over their yard, vehicles, and a canoe. A heart-shaped symbol oh was gosh. drawn in flammable fluid was found outside his girlfriend's bedroom. All Your right, let's, sucks. let's start right there. First off, you have just made yourself a goddamn suspect. <laughs> yeah, officer, a random black man tried to set my girlfriend's house on fire and he drew her a heart because I guess he was just nice. Happy Valentine's Day! I was, what does... Prior to the incident, Detective St. Madrigal had sent his girlfriend several texts via Snapchat threatening to burn down her home. So not only did he film himself doing the crime, he warned everyone that he was going to do the crime. Yeah, okay, so he has put a burning heart outside his girlfriend's bedroom. Suspicious. Yeah. He sends a text saying, I am going to burn down your house. When questioned about this, Madrigal said he was 25 minutes away in Arbor. Oh, no, I was at my mom's house. But surveillance video tells another story. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I don't right, even want to watch that video. Uh, right before yeah. the fire was started, detectives say security cameras captured Madrigal's truck arriving at the home. Once Madrigal learned of the video, he told detectives he drove past the home a few times and his girlfriend had a, he and his girlfriend had an argument. The third time he drove by, he noticed a fire burning, and he didn't know what to do. So he just left. And <laughs> and no, no, it wasn't me. It was it was the mystery black man. He saw a random black guy <sighs> light the fire and flee the scene. Oh my gosh! Read the next sentence. This is all I got. I told you it gets better. Oh my gosh, Nash, what have you told me? Oh, oh. Madrigal's, Madrigal's cell phone records show he Googled, quote, can you start charcoal with gasoline house on fire and other incriminating searches like, quote, X outside the house to burn up the house, the affidavit states. He Googled how... To, he Googled, he, <coughs> he planned this in advance. He Googled how to burn the house. He mixed the combination and poof, he set it on fire and poof, we put him in jail. <laughs> it's by the grace of God that we don't have three people burned up in a house fire. Yeah, but it's also by the grace of God that this guy apparently didn't even pass third grade to realize how stupid all of this is and I, thinking he'd get away with it. It's it's like the motherfuckers think they're like the protagonist in a fucking edgelord film. Right? They think, oh, well, I've seen this in video games and other stuff, too. It can't be that hard to do it in real life, right? It's, it is, because that's make-believe, because someone okay. made it all up. There's a lot to break down. First of all, I just want to point out, on many episodes of this show, you've said... The internet is permanent. 
it's forever. Whether you're Googling incriminating searches, or there's video evidence of you doing things, or you're texting each other, which is across a network, permanent! Snapchatting yourself on video and sending it to other strangers? You're done! Say, I mean, this Snapchat is not your friend. Google's not your friend. They will tell the police. They you snitch. Like a, you think he put like a big, like hairy filter across his face to make sure it wouldn't look like him? <laughs> and that was his defense. I could, and you know what? I just imagine this fucker out in the front yard while this is going on, humming, crawling in my skin. While he's, because you fucking. You, I, it, this is a tragedy, is I've got to do this, this is... to a burning ring of fire, and this, it burns for, oh. This, this guy is oh. like, this, this must ha- uh, This is what should happen, because this love, heart, she bad, I must do these things, this is- uh. Who, I want to know what the girl said. I want to know, I'm glad the girl's okay. I want to know two things. One, what sparked, no pun intended, this attitude if there was an argument or texting or she broke up with him because believing they were in a relationship when this happens kind of hard to believe too what did she see in this genius i know right it's there's, just... there's no way he just went off the deep end one random tuesday night and said oh i'm an idiot now pass me the lighter and the charcoal oh oh, oh my gosh uh so it's when asked about this, Madrigal said he had done some Googling to help his brother start the fuck. So now he's yeah. even bringing, he's bringing his brother into this shit, too. He had to ask his brother how to Google. There you go. I don't know how else you could, uh, he said he was aware his girlfriend's family was inside, so he knew that he was going to do it. The, 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 fir the, the first thing we learned this week is that you are not the tragic hero when you're having to Google how to commit your crime. And then Snapchatting results as if you're some weird scientist proving if, if it works or not. If, if you are having, in fact, to Google how to do the thing to make your great, dramatic, oppressed person statement, you're not you are not the protagonist of your story uh whatever you are not the victim and you are or you are not the victim you're not the hurt also to everyone no. out there uh, if you're in a relationship or you have someone you're fond of and they don't even know how to google something without help there's a sign that's that's what we call a flag Hey, can you help me out of Google charcoal flame heart my girlfriend's yard in that order, that wording? Uh. Also, don't, stop. can we stop inventing black people to be, to, can, can we just stop doing that? Also, it's not all black people, random black people. We have to stop random black people. Just stop, stop this. Stop doing it. It's the Eric Carpenter defense. We've, obviously, he's obviously a black person. We've learned that the UK <laughs> provides your water via magic. How do you think they get electricity and gas? I just, it was this, this, it's probably some Hogwarts bullshit. I was, I was, I was going to say, they throw pop rocks at something, and if it sparks on the ground, that's like, okay, yeah, this is where a power strip should go. Um... We've uh -huh. learned after you commit minor crime. Yeah. Do not escalate to the felony. It's not going to solve your problem. It's, you have made the problem worse, not better. Uh, if I'm late paying a parking ticket, I don't go trying to light every car I see on fire as a result. We've learned that you have to be careful driving in China because sometimes the driving signs are done via arts and crafts. <laughs> you, you can't know. <laughs> yeah, he looks like he knows what he's doing. That looks like an arrow. Leave him alone. Uh, uh. We learned that Waffle House must be exhausting to work in. 
I don't know. I, is that a good guesses plan? It's like you know how Applebee's is like desperate to bring in new people. Waffle House, you are you? Do you want to make your own food, but you don't have anything to cook? Come to our kitchen. We'll let you do whatever you want. Five bucks, kitchen's yours. And finally, we've learned that there is every possibility in the world that a possum can drink you under the table. Okay. Even in Florida, too, also. If the floor in Florida, they know how to drink. But also, I want to see a mascot for a college, Slurry the Drunk Possum. <laughs> like, literally, a drunk possum with a booze, like, booze in his little, like, stuffed paw. It's Slurry, everyone! I, I, I'm still impressed. I can't even drink yeah. one shot of bourbon. That shit's like lighter fluid. Yeah, isn't that like really mess up your throat if you down it too fast? But apparently, doesn't matter to him. The pot, it's her. It was a her. She, you it's know what? Her. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Yeah, but even so, now, okay. You've systematically destroyed a lot of vacation points and former residencies of places that I never want to go back to now. Like, the world has just become so much colder because of you, sir. Is that what you wanted? Now no one wants to go outside? Well, it wasn't my intention, but we'll just call that a happy accident.